you know it's so funny of course maybe it isn't but when it says go the word go comes up on the screen it flashes on the screen it says go and i'm thinking is it go or is it really go or should i wait a few minutes but i'm waiting a few minutes good morning everybody <laughs> it's that kind of a day today good morning good morning good morning <coughs> excuse me <coughs> it is saturday morning um the 20 something of uh it's got to be the 27th or something of something like that i don't know actually i've no idea i'm looking for my phone i don't have it anyway whatever date it is it's towards the end of january and um before we know it valentine's day will be upon us but let's deal with today let's not race ahead uh, so, first of all, before we begin, I'd like to say good morning to my spirit guide, Grey Eagle, who is standing to my right side. And good morning, Chris. Good morning, Rosemary. Good morning, everyone. We're getting people logging in right now. Great. Are you snowed in? <laughs> no, actually, we're not. The rest of the eastern seaboard seems to be, but we're not. Yes. Well, I had a phone call from my daughter this morning. We always FaceTime in the mornings. And um, uh, she said, um, it's a good thing you left, Mom. You got out just in time. And then she took me out into the garden. And there's a pile high with snow. Of course, my grandson is so excited. He's really, really excited. Yippee, snowman and sleighing and uh, all of that stuff. Um, so he's really excited because it's really, really winter now. And I'm really, really excited because even though it's cold, then you're going to laugh at me, Chris. I know you're going to laugh at me because when I say it's cold in Florida, it actually is freezing in Florida. Um, I got here on Sunday and I've had the heating on ever since. Of course, I am right by the ocean. And, you know, if it gets below 60-ish, 60, 60, 65, there's this sort of, the, we get all the moisture from the ocean coming in and then it sort of gets really, really cold and it feels much colder than it is. But we have a high today of <laughs> you won't believe it all of you people who think that florida is always sunny and it is actually sunny today but we've got a high of 57 degrees which is not good for me because it's cold uh but uh you know after this weekend hopefully next week it'll start to the temperature will start to rise again i know that a lot of you and i know that chris you included you're probably thinking 57 sounds fabulous to me it sounds like a sort of a nice coolish spring day but to me it's just cold i put the heat up this morning it's like what can i say uh so um uh, i'm just uh, i'm glad to be out of the cold cold snow and i'm just waiting for for it to warm up a little bit in florida so chris have you been out in the snow or is there no snow you've got to have had some snow right I yesterday drove in a circle almost 600 miles, making sure I made it home before midnight last night when the snow in the eastern seaboard hit uh, because they've really got some damaging winds, 60, 70 yes. mile per hour winds, cold, blizzard, snow. There were, um, you know, those electric bucket trucks that yes. line up. Yeah. Uh, as I was passing rest areas, there were like 20 of them lined up, gassing up, preparing for the storms up here. Um, so Ooh. I made it home before it all hit. Now, 600 miles. So six driving 600 miles, doing all the driving yourself, <coughs> plus added onto that journey. I know you made two or three different stops along the way. So... To do that sort of non-stop, to, to start all the way around, back again, all in one go, um, how long did it actually take you? And you've got to be exhausted. Are you exhausted? I wouldn't say I'm exhausted because I actually got to sleep in this morning being a Saturday. Um, 
I think it took me 14, 14 and a half hours, something like that. And that was literally what I call a turn and burn. There was no visiting. There was go here, pick this up, go there, do this, drop that one off and go. So no, it'll be a restful day today though. That's for sure. Well, I do know that you like driving and I also know that you like driving long distances. Of course, when Mike was with you, one of the, your favorite things to do as a couple was to just go, right? You get Absolutely. in the car. Absolutely. You wouldn't necessarily even have a destination in mind. And you just go. And you drive and drive and drive. But that's the two of you. Now, we know that Mike was with you on that journey. My story today is going to show us how clearly those in the spirit world can still be around us and sometimes still be a nuisance um, in the best way. Um, but uh, I'm sure that you felt him with you, right, Chris? Well, I made sure the seat was clear for him. <laughs> <laughs> and I would just, you know, sort of look over when I was finally by myself in the car and say, hey, what do you think about that? And what do you think about that? And should I turn left? Should I turn right? Is this a good place to stop? Or yeah, I should not take the hotel. I should just keep driving home, right? So I kept talking to him. Here's my big question. Big, big question. Did you listen to him? I tried to listen and I did feel presence. I didn't hear anything. I felt presence. So, you know, the big thing is that it's all very well because we all do it. Uh, I talk to my dad, but we've got to be so careful to talk to them and not at them. And when they are not necessarily physically present, it's so easy to just keep talking at them and at them and at them. And we're asking them questions. We just forget or we don't even realize that we should be waiting for them to answer our questions. So I was wondering, I know that, I know that you're good at that because you've had... I've, you know, I've trained you well, Chris, <laughs> but, um, you know, it is, uh, it is, I think, interesting for other people to, to know how we, we, we you and I, and uh, all of our group, how we work uh, in, in, you know, in, in this arena and knowing that we should listen <coughs> doesn't mean we always do, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> so sorry, the more I talk, the more I cough. Um, so, I'm going to save my voice a little bit. I'm going to go smack into story time and then uh, we'll take uh, comments and questions um, later. Do we have any? Do we have anybody there, Chris? Is there anybody there? Oh, they are sitting, it looks to me like with bated breath. They all know you're about to go into your story, so most of them have held off on the questions. Okay. <clears throat> now, some of you might know this story. Some of you, if you've read The Eagle and the Rose, you'll have read this story. But uh, I'm coming at this story from a little bit of a different angle and maybe telling one or two things that were not in the book. But uh, let me just say before I begin, if you miss this story, if you want to know more about it or if you want to read about it, <clears throat> excuse me, you will find this story in the pages of The Eagle and the Rose. And it seems fitting because we are still... We have a few months left. We still are celebrating the 25th anniversary of The Eagle and the Rose. So, published in May of 2021. Isn't it weird when you have to say last year and it just, it just only just went. Um, all right, so here we go. Once upon a time, as all good stories must begin. There was a couple who had a beautiful, beautiful baby boy. And um, unfortunately, it wasn't long. It was maybe only a week or so into this little newborn baby being born that uh, they were told that he, this child had severe uh, cerebral palsy. And that <clears throat> the best thing for the child and the best thing for them would be, because he was so severely uh, handicapped, that the best thing that they could possibly do 
was to uh, give him up, to put him into a um, into a nursing home, or to to uh, you know to um, to have put him into care. Um, and the chances of him living very long at all were <coughs> very very small. But this couple who actually lived in, in England, in um, just outside of Doncaster in the north of England, this couple had wanted this baby for a long time. So against the advice of their doctors, against the advice of their friends, and definitely against the advice of their family, decided that they would take this little boy, their little boy home, and whatever it took, that was what they would give to this child. So <clears throat> the mother stayed at home with him and the father went out to work. But between the two of them, when the husband came home from work, he would help his wife. I would say, of course, she would do the majority of the taking care of this child. But um, I would say they worked as a team. They loved each other. And they loved this boy, who lived beyond all expectations. So, several years went by. Every day, um, they would get him dressed, put him on the sofa, lie him on the sofa, and the mother would... Uh, talk to him. Every day she would brush his hair. Every day she would uh, she would talk to him as if he could hear her, even though the doctor said no. Every day for many years, several years, they nurtured him. They loved him. They cared for him. They cried for him. And of course, they're only human, right? They cried for themselves too. But not so much. Because every single day, they nurtured this child. They were able to express their love. They were able to express their caring, their kindness. Every day, in every way, this child was nurtured. Eventually, though, he passed. I'm not sure, I can't remember exactly how many years, let's say 10 or 12 years at least, maybe 13, I'm not quite sure. And if this family is listening, let me know, because anyway, that's a whole other thing. So now how do I know about this family? Well, I think you, you sort of quite, you know, you got it. So the child died. And <clears throat> in that particular area, in the north of England, I was very well known. I had My name had spread, not just to northern England, but to the whole of the country. And then, in fact, indeed, to so many countries around the world. So I was very well known. And um, somebody happened to mention to June, this is the mother of the child. Thank you, Grey Eagle. Uh, <laughs> somebody happened to mention to June that there was a, this a woman, uh, otherwise known as that woman. I'm known as that woman throughout the world. There's this woman who talks to the dead. Why don't you go see her, maybe? If she can, you know, find your son. All of her family advised her against it. Even her husband was not sure. Even though he was supportive of her, he was not sure it was a good idea. Everybody she spoke to, who she knew well, said it was not a good idea. What if it doesn't work? And anyway, are these people real anyway? And what happens if you get there and um, she doesn't do anything. She doesn't you know, give you anything. So June vacillated. 
should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I? And even having made an appointment, and even as she walked through the door of my house, even then, she was still not sure whether or not she was doing the right thing. So I walk into my study and she's sitting there, small, lovely lady. Her hands were clasped tightly. She was sitting very rigidly, you know, how she, you could tell, I could tell instantly that she was not comfortable. So she, the first thing she said to me was, I'm not sure if I really want to do this. So I said, well, why don't we sit, just sit for a minute and, you know, uh, you don't have to do it and it's okay. Uh, I'm not going to force you into doing it just because, you, just because you're here. And, um, you know, if you decide in a, in a few minutes that, you know, this is not for you, that's, that's okay. Well, as soon as I said that to her, she said, oh, well, okay, all right, okay, 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 I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it. You know how, uh, I suppose it's a bit like when, you know, somebody tells you to jump into a swimming pool and you can't swim. And you say, all right, I'll do it, I'll do it. So she was sort of diving in, <clears throat> not knowing at all what to expect. And she'd been told, like so many other people who come to see me, don't tell her anything, don't say anything, don't even tell her why you're there. So she didn't. So I said, well, you know, okay, well, just let's, just let's, let's see what's, what happens. Well, I mean, even as I walked through the door, I saw her son. Um, I didn't know anything about him. I certainly didn't know what I've just told all of you. Um, but I saw this young boy and I knew that that's why June was here. She'd, she'd, uh, she'd come to connect with her son. Other than that, I knew nothing. So I sit down and I say to her, okay, um, Just say yes or no to me if you understand what I'm saying. I said, but we have a young boy who's come to see you. He gave me his name and she burst into tears. Now remember, she's even though she lives in the same area to me, it's a big area. I know nothing about her and the only thing she knows about me is maybe I talk to dead people and maybe I can connect with her son and who knows. Well, for the next couple of hours, <laughs> her son was so chatty. Yeah, did I say chatty? Oh, that's right. He couldn't talk, could he? And he couldn't walk and so on and so forth. Anyway, he was so chatty. And he told us all sorts of things. He told us all about his life here on this earth. He told me about his mum and his dad and how nurturing and how loving they were. He told me that um, uh, she used to keep his hairbrush uh, on the mantelpiece above the fireplace. And she, he said, she drove me crazy because at least an hour every day she'd pick up the brush and she'd come and brush my hair and talk to me and tend to me. But she, he said that brush, she just wouldn't stop. <coughs> brushing my hair she drove me crazy he's laughing she's now she stopped crying now she stopped being amazed and now she's laughing too and agreeing oh my goodness I did do that um, and I said well you know he's not really upset or irritated he's just letting you know that you know he was very aware of what you were doing very aware of how much you loved him and very, very aware of how much you nurtured him, and cared for him. It, it went on and on, this fantastic, this amazing consultation. I mean, people think that I must be used to it because I do it all the time, but I'm just as amazed as everybody else and I get just as excited as everybody else. And, and actually I just get, as wowed, if not more so, than everybody else. Because when when things happen this clearly, and you have such a strong connection and a clear connection to someone in the spirit world, 
it is more than a wow moment. It's even more than a wow, wow, wow moment. You can't, can't describe the joy and the excitement that it brings. So here was June with me now. We've become good friends, as you would expect, and um, sitting chatting to her son, a thing that she would never believe could have ever happened. I remember <clears throat> some of the final words he spoke to her. You know, Mum, he said, when I was here, I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk, I couldn't run, I couldn't play. I couldn't express myself. He said to me, whispering in my ear, Rosemary, tell her I can walk now. So I did. Rosemary, tell her I can talk now. Well, we knew that, so I did. Rosemary, tell her I can run and I can play and I am healthy and I am growing and tell her I love her. So I did. Of course, June visited me many times after that. You would think that that would be the end of it for me though, right? Let's fast forward a week or two, shall we? So I was going to give a, a talk or whatever it is you call it that I do to a big group of people, a big audience of people. And um, so, I'm there getting ready, hoping to get messages for people. People are hoping to get messages. And I begin. I'm coming to the gentleman just to, you know, to the left there at the back. Uh, I'm looking for David, is what I'm told. Man shoots his hand up, I'm David. Okay. Give him a message, all well and good. Come give an somebody else a message from somebody in the spirit world um, but now uh, you must have a David in well my husband's name is David okay I'm thinking what's with David what's with the David but anyway throughout the whole evening every time I gave a message to someone it might be from their mother their grandmother father brother sister whoever every time I gave a message at some point during the message the name of David would crop up. Well, my second name's David. Oh, well, my son's name is David. Uh, well, my father's name is David. <clears throat> it kept cropping up and cropping up. And I'm looking at Gregor and I'm saying at some point, the name of David kept cropping up way, way too often. Very unusual. And I said to Gregor, what's with the David? And I hear laughter from the spirit world and I look to my left and I see a young boy laughing and excited and so pleased with himself and I realize I'm thinking I know that kid I've seen that kid before where have I seen and it occurred to me wait a minute and I started laughing he started laughing Greg was chuckling. And then this kid comes, she says, do you remember me? And I said, how can I forget you? This was June's son. <laughs> His name was David. He said, Greg said it would be okay if I came with you and I could help you. Well, yes, he was helping me. But what he'd done was he'd had to actually gone through the audience to find as many Davids as possible because he wanted me to know, he wanted his, me to tell his mum and he wanted the whole audience to know that just because you're dead does not mean you can't participate. David, born with cerebral palsy, totally paralysed from the moment he was born, was now making up for lost time and interfering with me, interfering with my 
<coughs> with my sessions and having such a great time, having spent all of those years not being able to do anything, not being able to say anything, he now thought that it was a really great idea if he could come and join with me and help me when I was giving messages to people. David came several times throughout the next probably three or four years. Every now and again, I'd give with me in an audience, and all of a sudden, David and David and David, and I'd look around, and yes, and there was David laughing at me, saying, "I'm here. Can I help?" People think that when you're, you know, when you're dead, then, you know, even those of us who believe that there's no such thing as dying. It's hard to imagine, isn't it, that they can interfere or they can participate in, in the way that I've just described. But our loved ones in the spirit world, they do participate. They do really, really get involved in our families. And they do lots of things very often to, to, um, to make us take notice. They'll turn on the lights. They'll switch off the TV. They'll whatever it is, they're good with electrical appliances, I've no idea why, but they are good with electrical, electrical appliances, but other things as well. And um, they can make themselves known in so many ways. And you can imagine that every time June came to visit me to talk to David, her David, uh, you can imagine her joy and her excitement that he had a life now. He had a life. He had a voice. He had legs to carry in places. He had a personality, which was an amazing personality. He was so naughty. But David is a true earth angel. Whenever people came to see June and her husband, of C. David, they would get something, they would gain something from simply being in his presence. And June, his mother, the most amazing, selfless person, gave her life to her son so that she could give him her, so that she could give him everything of herself that she possibly could, knowing that he wouldn't be hers in a material sense, forever. I just thought that you might like to hear that story and that it might give all of you a little comfort knowing that um, they do participate, you know, they are with you. Uh, don't discount them. Don't discount the mischief they can get up to. Don't discount that moment when you feel someone stroking your hair. Don't discount that moment when you feel a fingers running down your cheek. Don't discount those moments when you feel someone around you. Don't discount them, but embrace them. Because our loved ones in the spirit world, as David did, I'm looking around, I can't see him at the moment, I would tell you if I could. Uh, but, um, you know, thinking about him and thinking about him, I was thinking about him yesterday, thinking about David, and the joy and the excitement of being able to participate and to disrupt me in the work that I was doing, in a good way though, thinking about the joy of knowing that our loved ones are still with us, uh, still getting up to mischief, if that's their inclination, still loving us and still participating in our families. That has to be the most joyful and the most positive thing. It's on my list. Do you remember on Thursday we talked about making a list of all the things we love? That's on my list. David is on my list. But the idea of David and the idea that it gives us that, that our loved ones in the spirit world are still participating with us. Even my daddy as he's looking at me right now. He's been gone for so many years and still around whenever I need him. The end. Rosemary, okay, yes. back yes. back when you had this experience, were you familiar with the term Earth Angel like you are now? No. No, not at all. I didn't know that David was an Earth Angel. 
Um, but since that time, and we were, Grey Eagle and I were talking about it yesterday, which is why I thought about this story, uh, and that David was definitely, definitely an Earth Angel. Um, there aren't so many, but they keep do keep cropping up, don't they, from time to time. But no, uh, all of those years ago, I had no idea that, uh, that um, David was an Earth Angel. No. All right. Well, um, Andrew mentioned as you were going into the story and you were talking about Mike and, you know, riding in the car with me, um, he wrote, I talked to my wife, but I seem to have zero psychic ability. So get nothing back. <laughs> well, I don't think you've got zero psychic abilities because I think we all are born with a sense of knowing, a sense of understanding. But I think that so many of us through the years, and especially those of you who are continually on your cell phones, I think of, I can think of one person who comes to visit, fortunately not me, but comes to visit his son, and all he does is he's on his cell phone and, and missing anything and everything that's going on around him, including what his son is saying to him, but that's beside the point. But for those of you who are on your computers, on your cell phones, and you and you know, or whatever it is you're doing, or you're playing games on on, because that's a big thing, isn't it? Whatever it is that you're doing, you're missing. You, it's everything is going above your head. It's going past you. And I think that you know, so many of us. I I feel that I'm very fortunate in that I teach my. I've taught my daughter, and I teach my grandson not just words but by showing them too to be more aware um I, I would say that almost every day for the last month since i've been in new york my grandson has said to me mosey what what color is my aura today i would say almost every day so he is aware of things that are going on beyond the television beyond his computer beyond all of the mechanical stuff that goes on and, you know, beyond connecting with his friends. And I know there's going to be a time when um, he'll be able to, he'll, you know, so knowing about auras and knowing about energy, he'll he'll be applying that to different things. Uh, but so many of us, don't we don't even realize, do we, that that stuff goes on. So don't be disheartened. You say you talk to your wife. If you heard what I said to Chris, did you listen? And sometimes it takes patience and time and you've just got to simply shut up, switch your mind off and just pay attention to your thoughts, pay attention to your feelings, pay attention to the energy that's around you, pay attention to the atmosphere and just, you know, just give it a go. And don't expect it's going to, something's going to happen the first time you do it. It takes time and perseverance. But if you do that, if you start to listen, You'll get that. Chris. This might be a good time, Rosemary, because you have new listeners in the chat room here for your story time. Can you explain to our listeners what listen for them means? I'm thinking of the rainbow song. All right. Okay. Well, um, you know, uh, would you all like another story? It'll be brief, this story. But years and years and years ago, some of you have heard me say this, tell this story before. Years and years and years ago, when I was sort of very doubtful about my gifts, very doubtful questioning, and is this the right thing to do, and so on and so forth, I went to bed one night, and as I put my head on the pillow, I heard what sounded to me like a choir singing. The voices of this choir were unbelievable, beautiful, sweet, incredible. Let's say it's possible that it was a choir of angels. It sounded like a choir of angels to me. And they were singing the rainbow song. And so many of you don't hear, what, well, what's that then? What is the rainbow song? I will sing a little of it for you. <clears throat> but if I start coughing, you're going to have to put up with it. So, um, and... The reason they sang this song to me was because they were teaching me. They were teaching me to do something that I'd never before even thought to do. So basically, the rainbow song, it begins, listen with your eyes. Well, what's that mean anyway? How are you supposed to listen with your eyes? 
But as you go through it, and as you begin to listen to your loved ones in the spirit world, as you begin to be aware, it makes so much sense. Listen with your eyes, listen with your eyes and sing everything you see. You can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing along with me. And then red and yellow and pink and green, orange and purple and blue. You can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow too. Now we know that everything is energy and energy breaks down into colors if you if you um, put a prism in a window and let the sun shine through the prism you'll see the energy breaks up into shards of color uh, beautiful different colors reds yellows greens blues sing a rainbow sing everything you see they're not necessarily talking about what you see with your eyes when i talk the spirit world this is going to blow your mind a little bit but i'll often see behind my eyes <laughs> people who People who know me well, I don't know if you've ever seen this, Chris, people who know me really well and have seen me work a lot, they know when I'm starting to work, even if I can be in a pub, I can be in a restaurant, but apparently I get that look and people tell me that it's almost as if my eyes start to sink back in my head. And when I'm looking, listening, in other words, paying attention, you're not necessarily listening with your ears. You're not necessarily looking with your eyes. You're looking with uh, with that which is within you, which is something that where every single one of us is born with this ability, this knowing, this sense of knowing. And this, this um, people call it the sixth sense, but, well, that's a whole other story for another day. But um, when you are listening, you sort of, you're putting yourself in that place and you're sort of sitting back from yourself. You're standing back and you're paying attention. And everything you see, seeing everything you see, what those in the spirit world are saying to me, what these angels singing this song were saying to me, when you see something, say it. Sing it, you can sing it, you can say it, whatever it is. Sing everything you see. Don't be afraid if you see a shadow. Or if you see a glimpse of a little light or something, don't think, oh, that's my imagination. Don't dismiss it. Hold it for now. You can dismiss it later, but hold it for now. Hold it for that moment and sing it out. I can see a light. Maybe that's you. Maybe it isn't you as you're talking to your wife, as you're talking to your loved ones in the spirit world. Maybe that's you. Maybe it isn't you. But hey, I'm going to keep doing this. So you literally sort of Almost, it's almost if you remove yourself from the physical and just allow your senses and your feelings to take over and you become, as you do it and as you do it more and more, you become more and more sensitive, you become more and more aware and then you become more and more able to hear them. That's the best I can do today, Chris. I think that's really helpful, especially with the context of your story yeah. and the questions that are coming in. So Jillian okay. says, when we had our consult last Christmas of 2020, we you did. talked to me about my friend who passed slash my angel. Since then. I, well, wait, hold on. Did I talk about him to you, Jillian? Or did I talk to? Because I think I talked to people in the spirit world. So I'm interested to know, are you going to rephrase that a little bit? Carry on, Chris. All right. Since then, a lot of things going on and I talk and try to listen. The other day, my phone had January 22nd and it was 2.22 p.m. Ooh. I had to laugh and I said out loud to him, I don't think you could fit any more twos. <laughs> then my eyes went to a vehicle beside me that had twos all over it in a few other places my eyes then went to and again more twos so laughing again i said okay i get it my question is how can they draw your attention slash your eyes to certain images because you're listening in those moments you have made yourself more aware you're talking to them 
silly thing to say. I don't think he could fit any more, any more because they're listening to you, and you're listening to them. So they can say, "Oh well, we'll we'll show you. <laughs> let let us let us help you here." So they nudge us and they guide us and they whisper to us and they're literally it's like being nudged to look there or nudged to look there. But what happens is when you you because when you're listening, you're opening yourself up. You're making yourself more available. Uh, so you're opening yourself up to all of this stuff that's going on. And that way, you're allowing them to guide you. So it's just a little nudge here, a little nudge there, and so on. Just, you know, keep it up. I love this. Keep it up. How, how was your consultation? Did you have a good time is what I want to know. Chris. Tracy says, I have a lot of electrical things in the home going on and off. It doesn't frighten me. It makes me <laughs> smile. Good. I'm glad. Tracy, that's fantastic. <clears throat> All right. Andrew says, last session, you touched on negativity and seemed to allude that here on the earth plane, the consequences of being negative is not immediately apparent. I remember you saying something like negativity can be got away with here. Is there something perhaps of a time buffer? I've read along the same lines of affirmation, manifestation with a time buffer. Can you talk for us about negativity, possibly as a block to accessing higher levels of self and psychic awareness? I'm having trouble at the moment, still grieving for my late wife. Mostly I'm up, but I am volatile and people do press my buttons. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's see if we can help you a little bit. Um, all right. Well, I think Chris, we were talking earlier on before the show, uh, because, uh, I do very often say, and we have talked about this many times before that, um, Life happens for you, not to you. But when you think things are happening to you, there is a tendency then you leave yourself open. It, it, having that attitude, oh gosh, you, ne you never guess what happened to me today. You never guess, you know, this tragedy happened to me. Um, this... Uh, you know, whatever it is, we tend to think that life happens to us. And when we're thinking that life happens to us, if you have that inclination to look towards the negative, to look towards a half glass empty rather than a glass half full, if you have that inclination, or if so many things seem to have happened to you that you can't take it anymore, you know, you have that tendency of, uh, of sort of going towards the negative. Um, you become a victim of it. You become a victim of that negativity. And <clears throat> I don't think that the time buffer stops us uh, from being affected by it, but I think that we might not see the results of our negativity for a while until we look back and then we can see, you know, that how devastating that never that negativity has affected us and has made our lives miserable we have by buying into it by delving into it and i'm i'm not saying that you shouldn't do it because we're human and we do these things but the consequence of negativity um is is immediate but not necessarily immediately seen we could sit here for another hour just talking about this one subject and maybe one day we'll perhaps do a, uh, a, a webinar on this subject. But life does not happen to us. It happens for us. Now, for those of you who are suffering, you've lost someone, perhaps in tragic circumstances, you're probably saying to me, how can, I, how, how can she say that? Life doesn't happen for us, all of these awful things. But we also know, those of us who have, you know, sort of studied, uh, been involved with spiritual 
uh, works or, uh, or learning about spiritual things, we absolutely know that the best lessons, and even those of us who don't even know necessarily on a spiritual level, our best teachers at school were the tough ones. <laughs> the best teachers are the ones we remember. The best teachers were the ones who caused us pain and heartache and made us cry and were brutal to us. They're the best teachers. Life is the same. Our best teachers, we wish it weren't so, but our best teachers are so often the pain, the grief, the heartache, the, the traumas, the best teachers, because they're the things that we remember. And if we're fortunate, if we're lucky, and we allow ourselves to understand that that even though it's a horrible thing, it's happened for us. If we can take that, this has happened for us so that we can learn, so that we can grow. Remember that, I think I told this story before Christmas, um, when uh, I had a session with my students and we had this amazing woman come through from the spirit world. She was an amazing teacher. And she asked us all, what if I... If I could give you a gift for Christmas, what would it be? And everyone in the room said, joy, peace on earth, the, you know, happiness for my family, whatever it was. It was all that sort of thing. And finally, she said, if I could give you a gift for Christmas, I would give you the gift of pain. I would give you the gift of heartache. And I would give you the gift of tears. Now, she said these things not because she's a really mean, cruel person, horrible person. She said these things to us because the gift of pain, the gift of heartache and the gift of tears are what build us. They're what help us to grow. If we can combat these things and understand that these things are given for us to deal with and to get over, to, I don't mean to get over the, the, uh, the incident, but to climb over the pain to work through the tears, to work through the, the pain and the heartache to make us stronger. Because we know that pain and tears and heartache, if we work at getting through them, we know that they make us stronger. These are the things that make us stronger. So life does not happen to you. It happens for you. And as far as time um, and, and, and the time buffer, it, it's not, it's, it's nothing more than we don't always see the results of our actions until way later. And, um, and I think that negativity is, when we go down that path of negativity, it is so damaging to us. It is so damaging to our soul. It is so damaging to, if you, if you, if you are a person who sees auras, or as I can see auras, when you see someone with this, awful negative attitude you would not like what you see um you know if you could stand in front of a mirror and you're a negative person you would see that your energy would be depleted it would be grays and blacks and swirling indigos and it it would not be the rainbow song it would not be bright it would not be clear because the negativity depletes our energy and pulls us down and gives us this awful drab um, existence. So it's very, you know, it's easy to become depressed. It's, a I, look, I've been there, I know this, and it's hard to work through it. But if we can think of the rainbow song, and if we can understand that we are beings who can be filled with light and love and positivity, and if instead of saying, this happened to me, say, this happened for me, so that leads to the next question. So if this has happened for me, what is the good in this? What is there for me? What do I need to learn? What do I need to know to grow and to become more positive and more aware? Chris. Hey, this is from Cheryl. Sometimes before I fall asleep, I close my eyes and see outlines of faces that come and go. Are they spirit images? It's possible. Without knowing a little bit more, it's very possible. Um, 
there's a fine line between imagination and reality. And I always encourage people with their imagination not to go crazy with it, but to understand that there's this fine line. And sometimes we can go from what we imagine to what is real in a blink, in a click, in a heartbeat. So just go with it, my darling. See if, you know, see if um, maybe, maybe uh, if you, if you listen, uh, maybe someone might talk to you. Maybe you might hear a whisper of something wonderful and lovely. Maybe your loved ones in the spirit world are coming to say, we're here. Or maybe they're just coming to say, good night, Cheryl. We're here with you. Good night. Maybe that. But you won't know until you pay a little bit more attention to it and start listening, my lovely. Chris. Rhonda says, it takes a lot of concentration and work to quiet your mind, but it's so well <laughs> worth it when you master it. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> you know, um, I have an admission to make to all of you. You're not going to like me very much when I make it, but those of you who know me well know that this is true. I insist and encourage my students to work at their meditation. And there are lots of different types of meditation. And often uh, it makes me smile because often people mistake contemplation for meditation. Uh, contemplation is when you sit to meditate and the next thing you know, you're thinking about what you're going to have for dinner and <laughs> what the kids are up to or, you know, whatever it is. That's contemplating. And people sit there and they think that they're meditating and in fact that they're contemplating. Meditation is uh, literally an exercise in uh, totally uh, getting rid of all that stuff in your head and allowing room for the good the good stuff, the positive stuff. Um, so there are different types of meditation. But, oh, wait a minute. Yes, I was going to admit something to you all. As much as I encourage everybody to meditate, <coughs> because I think it's extremely important for people to learn to meditate, I don't. Ah, don't, get, don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me now. Uh, what I do is when I sit to meditate, I have to chuckle, Grey Eagle's chuckling as well. What I do is the minute I quiet my mind, of course, I've got all of these lovely people coming in to talk to me. And Grey Eagle takes those moments to talk to me and to teach me things. Uh, but nevertheless, yes, I'm glad, Rhonda, that you're finding that you're able to do it. And I'm really, really pleased that because it, it really can be extremely beneficial. So keep it up, my lovely. Don't don't think, well, if she doesn't do it, I'm not going to do it. Don't do that, because I do something differently. Chris, <laughs> get Bar me out of hot water. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes perfect sense, Rosemary. It makes absolute perfect sense. I mean, <laughs> we're babes in the wood, and so when we go to quiet our mind, you know, we're hearing the clock tick, and we're hearing the, you know, washing machine go, and, you know, those are the, the worldly things that we first hear and we have to actually work through that and you you were born with this gift so it comes natural and they already know they can connect with you it makes perfect oh, sense right. there they are here we go <laughs> oh good she's got a minute for us <laughs> and of course yeah. i do chris keep going <laughs> all right so barb says a medium Hi, barb. told my niece that my sister likes to come through with music the other morning, I woke up to beautiful chimes playing for a few seconds. It was uh -huh. lovely. She was also told that my sister was going to knock over a drink on Thanksgiving and was so laughing about it. She certainly did that and right at me. So love that. How nice and how, how lovely. Isn't it lovely when you see these things come to fruition? You see, you know, you told something and you think, oh, that perhaps can't be right or whatever and then and there it is there it happens you know when people people do this to me all the time they'll either email me or they'll come on a show like this and so they'll say rosemary i came to see you and you told me and i <laughs> and i always wait with bated breath for the next thing because who knows and i'm thinking gosh i hope it was something good <laughs> you told me or you said this would happen that would happen and it's always great when we see those things. So fabulous for you, Chris. 
Gina's writing, she had recently asked to have uh, Joe put on the healing list. So she's saying, thank you, Rosemary, Chris, and this amazing group for putting Joe on the healing list. He has since left this earth life. I'll be listening with my eyes now for him. Well, you know, um, as sad as I know you, you must be, and my heart goes out to you. Uh, I do, you know, I, I think that even, even in the case of this happening, uh, and I've seen it so very often, we put someone on the healing list and their suffering ends much quicker than it might. Or uh, with animals, I, I remember, I remember a lady, uh, oh gosh, years and years ago, at one of our healing centers coming in and she's crying, crying, and my cat is this and that, and the vet wants me to put him down, and will you put him on the healing list? And I had to sit her down quietly, hold her hands and say, you do realize if we put him on the healing list, we could speed his passing. And uh, she, she looked at me, but she said, but, but, you know, I, I want him to live. And I, and I said to her, yes, but he's sick and he's suffering and healing and putting someone on the healing list very often will help with that and perhaps even speed up the, the process. And uh, sure enough, uh, that's exactly what happened. So um, not that I'm saying that we sped up, you know, <laughs> Joe's, Joe's passing because I'm sure it was already decided for him when he was when he was going but uh I think I'm going to say let's put you on our healing list for a little while because I think you might need it too Chris all right we're coming right up on time Rosemary um Mark says how can one experience joy without having sorrow I agree with the gifts of sorrow tears etc Thanks, Rosemary. Uh, we need, no, I say we, the many, need to listen and understand. We certainly do. And I'm going to say this, without the sorrows, without the tears, without the pains, how would we know what joy feels like? You've got to have the one to know what the other is. That's what I feel. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Gosh, this hour's gone fast. How could it possibly go this fast? So thank you, thank you, thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, you know, you know I love you all, and you know I love to hear your comments, your questions, your interactions, and I hope you love to hear my stories. Uh, anyway, uh, so I'd like to say thank you to Greg, especially Chris, thank you so much for everything and especially for doing a 600 mile drive around and then still be, you should be crashing after this, you're going to go have a nap this afternoon I think, uh, and still be available for us today, so thank you so very much, again thank you all of you for listening, um, until I see you again Thursday morning probably and we might do some off the cuff stuff and stuff like that. Now I'm home and settled, almost, almost, not quite, but almost settled. Uh, we'll be doing some other stuff and we'll let you know. But watch for the off-the-cuffs and watch for the other stuff that we're planning on doing. Uh, so until I see you again, everyone, if you need to know more about me, go to my website, rosemaryaltea.com. Is that right, Chris? Yes. Yes, rosemaryaltea.com. If you want to email us, you can email chris, K-R-I-S, at rosemaryaltea.com uh, that'll get you in there if you want to know more about me do, do go to the website or do email us with your questions and any one of you who'd like to be put on our healing list of course email and let us know uh, so until I see you all again please 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 would you please would you do something for me can you all do something for me seeing as I gave you a great story this morning could you please have a wonderful and a very blessed rest of the day and have a very, very wonderful and a very blessed uh, rest of the weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.